I'm often asked when using the Quest 3 for flight simulation, which is better, virtual desktop or the link cable? AMVR have recently released a new VR link cable with fast charging. Designed for Quest and Pico headsets, so I thought now was the perfect time to put it to the test. So we'll test virtual desktop, which is a wireless option, and compare it to the link cable, which is a direct connection to the PC. And we'll also check out the fast charge option and ascertain if it can charge faster than the VR headset drains the battery. It's a relatively inexpensive purchase. I purchased mine from AMVR directly, price included shipping, and it cost me just over £18 delivered. The marketing blurb says it has a 5 gigabits per second transfer speed and fast charge to keep the battery charged all day. This is the SimHanger channel. My name is Mark. You're very welcome and let's get started. Let's have a look at what you get for £18. The cable itself is super flexible, lightweight and good quality. Requires a USB 3 or higher connection to the PC and there's a standard 90 degree USB-C to fit into the headset. Power connection junction is USB-C and conveniently located at the opposite end to the headset connection. The power connection cable is not included and AMVR recommend that the output plug should be rated at 18 watt. Using the Velcro strips supplied, I've attached the link cable to the Quest 3. It's simply plugged in to the USB-C port. The other end is obviously connected directly to your PC and you can use it standalone or charge while you're playing. Simply plug into the outlet and using a USB-C to USB-C charging cable, connect it to both ends. And now your headset will charge while you're using it. I've done a number of tests. Let's check out the results. All my tests were done using Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. In my first test, my battery was at 58% and 18 minutes of use, it had recharged up to 66%. I then subsequently did another test longer, 108 minutes or 1 hour 48. The battery in the headset was at 56%. When I started and 79% when I ended. AMVR cable seems to use intelligent charging, seems to let the battery drop down to something in the region of about 70% and then recharges up to about 90% or so. But overall, it does exactly what it promised to do. It kept the battery in the VR headset charged. For our test today, I thought we'd take advantage of the recent city update. We're at San Francisco and I'm in the Flying Iron Spitfire Mark 9. We'll be doing a number of side-by-side -side tests, comparing performance and other factors between virtual desktop and the link cable. I need to mention that the results that you will see are indicative only, as they will vary substantially based on your various settings in SIM, the graphics mode that you're using, and most importantly, your hardware configuration with your CPU and GPU playing a large part. The focus shouldn't really be on the frames per second recorded, but more on the visuals and consistency of performance and so on. It should also be borne in mind that these are two very different methods of accessing PC VR. Therefore, the tests are not on a like-for-like -like basis. For example, Virtual Desktop has a maximum resolution of 3072 by 3216 per eye, whereas for the link cable through the MetaQuest Link, the maximum resolution is 2720 by 2976 per eye. For Virtual Desktop, we'll be using it in godlike mode and we'll be using the AV1 10-bit codec. Slightly larger files than the HEVC or H.264 Plus codecs had better compression and therefore less artifacts, but also the most demanding on the system. I have a 900 megabit internet connection. I don't have Wi-Fi 6, but I do have a 5 gigahertz connection. The headset for all tests were at 80 hertz. Frame generation is turned off. Snapdragon is enabled. Please note when used in godlike mode, it's not an upscale, it's just a sharpening tool. Turning now to the MetaLink, I have turned the graphics up as far as it will allow. There are other options where you can turn it up further, but I've ignored that for now. By turning the automatic off, you can then vary the resolution. So if you are struggling for performance, you do have the option to turn that down if you want to. Once again, I'm running at 80 hertz and I'm using the option for OpenXR runtime for both the link and virtual desktop tests. 
As this is designed as a stress test, let's have a quick look at the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 settings. We will of course be testing it in TAA mode, but we'll also be testing it in the most demanding, which is DLAA, which is Deep Learning Anti-Aliasing. What is the difference between DLAA and say DLSS in quality mode and so on? DLAA takes advantage of the AI to improve sharpening and image quality, but there's no upscaling required. Therefore, you get the benefits of TAA in terms of visual clarity without as many artifacts. To use DLAA, you do require a fairly beefy PC and GPU. Foveated rendering, which you could use to enhance performance, is not used. And my VR settings are relatively high. In fact, by and large, they're nearly all ultra. The only difference being is that I've turned down some of these shadow settings, as they tend to set performance without any visual benefit in VR. Now, I'm not saying that these are the recommended settings for VR, of course, although personally I do use DLAA continuously in the Quest. But to some degree, I'm trying to compensate for the system that I have, which is a 14900K and a 1590 GPU. We'll be departing San Francisco International, swoop down low over San Francisco with all its photogrammetry, few clouds selected, and plenty of water around for reflections. Before we jump into the test, a few comments I'd like to make. Because the test system I'm using is a fairly high-end PC, it could be quite easy to misinterpret the results that we'll see. So here's my summary in a nutshell. For virtual desktop, you need a strong Wi-Fi connection and a relatively powerful system, ideally something around the 4080 Super or above, to achieve relatively high settings in SIM. The more advanced your networking and Wi-Fi is, the better performance you'll get. The link cable offers a viable alternative to those that can't get an acceptable performance in virtual desktop. The direct cable connection to the headset is slightly easier on the system, there's slightly less load. It is limited to some degree by the transfer rate that it's able to achieve, linked directly not only to your GPU but mainly to your CPU. But if you can't get a good performance on virtual desktop, a link cable may well provide a more satisfactory experience. If you're struggling with either mode to get the performance that you want, you have options to turn down your resolution. For virtual desktop to enable frame generation, you can enable fixed foveated rendering, and obviously change or turn down the settings within Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. With all that said, let's get into the tests. Our first test is using the TAA anti-aliasing mode. As mentioned earlier, please remember that virtual desktop is at a slightly higher resolution than the link cable. In virtual desktop, the frames per second is slightly higher and the latency generally is lower than it is with the link cable. And that remained the case throughout the various tests and throughout the flights. However, one noticeable difference was whilst the latency and the frame rate varied considerably under virtual desktop, the link cable was remarkably consistent, with frame rates staying between the 39 and 40 mark by and large, and latency between 24 and 25 milliseconds. In terms of the visuals, there wasn't a lot of difference between them. Both flights were flown at the same time of day. And whilst it's subjective, I would say the link cable probably had the more realistic colors, not quite as loud. And whilst as we can see, there's a 10 to 15 frame per second average difference between virtual desktop and link cable, when I was in the headset and flying, well, I wasn't aware of that. Both flights were fairly smooth overall. One or two micro pauses, a little bit of juddering here and there, but nothing significant or would detract from the overall VR experience. As we swoop under and over the bridge, I would say the visuals, marginally the detail was better with the link cable. Before doing the test, I'd expected link cable to have a higher FPS, but for my system, clearly that's not the case though. For my second and final test, I'm testing it out in DLSS DLAA mode, and the results were very similar. Virtual Desktop reported overall slightly lower FPS, therefore a marginal increase in terms of overall latency, but the link cable remained as it was with the previous TAA test. Frame rate stuck around the 39 to 40 mark, 
and latency set between 24 and 25 by and large. If you are prone to motion sickness then look away now, as whilst in the cockpit I then changed my view fairly quickly looking for any tearing and juddering. I must say both performed very well, there was very little to identify any juddering or tearing of the image. The benefit of DLAA mode of course is the clarity in the cockpit. It rivals if it if not better as TAA mode, everything was absolutely crystal clear. Memory usage remained pretty much the same between both the virtual desktop and link cable using the DLAA mode on the link cable getting varying download speeds but didn't seem to affect performance at all. I'm awaiting the receipt of a 9070 XT graphics card. Be interesting to run similar tests using that card to see how it performs. I must say the link cable was very easy and straightforward to set up and overall I would say it performed very well indeed. Personally I still prefer virtual desktop. I just like the sense of freedom that you get without cables attached to your headset. But for those struggling to get performance, well I think that the link cable is a viable option that's worth exploring and it is affordable. Overall great visuals. And what a great headset the Quest 3 has turned out to be. Versatile, flexible and costing 50% less than its closest rival. Well I hope you found this useful and informative. If you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And as always thank you very much for joining me today. Stay well, look after yourself, see you again soon and ciao for now.